implication of Chaitanya Charitamrita is now complete. And he said, and my disciple, my dear disciple Prajumana, who I call Prajumana Mahashoy, all credit goes to him for what he has done to make this book possible. And when he gave credit, he started going to Arundhati for Prajumana's wife, and, and this devotee and another devotee. Papa was basically taking no credit for anything, although he did everything. He was the one who was up from midnight till four in the morning every day, translating and writing purports and through the day as well. He was the one who picked up these devotees who were assisting him <coughs> from the gutters of material life and spoon fed and trained them how to be devotees, <coughs> teaching them painstakingly step by step how to do what their service was going to be, Inspi inspiring, empowering, and yet he gave all credit to them. And he meant it. This is the transcendental state when we just don't want to take credit. We want to give credit. Because Krishna is manifesting in the holy name, Krishna is manifesting in the deities, and Krishna is manifesting in the devotees. Whatever we do, if we give credit to other devotees, we are giving credit to Krishna in the most pleasing ways. Because Krishna wants to see our cooperation, Krishna wants to see loving relationships between devotees. He sees we're actually genuine and from our heart giving credits to others. We're showing our love for Krishna in a very, very special and serious way. And Krishna's very pleased. Because the fact is Krishna is manifesting through the devotees. And their association is empowering us. So here we have the demigods, they're devotees. They, some of them want to take credit. So they have really big posts. And tremendous quantities of wealth and riches and influence and power. Sometimes they fight with each other too. in the presence of Hiranyakashipu. They were totally united because they all were helpless and it was hopeless. And just in a similar way of the Brijabhasis when they were surrounded by fire, they all in total unity came to Krishna and said, please save us. There's nothing we can do. All the demigods approach Lord Brahma and with Lord Brahma, they all approach Lord Vishnu. We are absolutely, totally helpless. We are surrounded by the fire of Hiranyakashipu's powers. The demigods were really like slaves of Hiranyakashipu. They were in a humble position. And because they took shelter of Krishna in a totally humbled, hopeless position, where it was beyond them, where none of them was going to take the credit for saving the universe, where none of them was going to take the credit for anything, because they had nothing left. They lost everything. In that state, they approached Krishna. they were all united. <laughs> Just one demigod would have said, Krishna, you know, I don't know about the rest of them, but please help me. Krishna wouldn't have come. In all of these stories, Hiranyaksha, Hiranyakashi, Purava, and all the demigods together, unanimously take a humble position in total unity and cry out to Krishna, save us. Then Krishna appears. 
same good time. All of us together. We give up this misconception. We give up this Hiranyakashipu tendency to be the proprietor, to be the controller, to be the enjoyer, to take the credit. And with one voice, his mentality. And Jaladuta, he wasn't writing in his diary, I am going to distribute bhakti throughout the Western world by my, by my scholarship and my devotion. Prabhupada was writing, I have no scholarship. I have no knowledge and I have no devotion, but you've given me the name Bhakti Vedanta. So Krishna, now it is up to you to fulfill that. I, have, I don't have the words. Unless you give me the words, I cannot reach them. So from the very beginning, seeing the blazing fire of material existence engulfing the entire world, Prabhupada was liberated. But he wanted to save us. From the very beginning, Krishna, only you can do it. He gave all credit to Krishna. He gave all credit to his Gurudev. He gave all credit to his disciples. He took no credit <coughs> for himself. Adoita Chari is Mahavishnu. Nityananda is Balarama. Srivas Thakur is Narada Muni, speaking the story. Narada Muni is the guru of Prahlad, the guru of Dhruva, the guru of Dhruva, the guru of, of Valmiki, and Magrari, and the greatest kings. Even Kamsa offered his obeisances to Narada Muni. Powerful personality. But here he is, a Srivast Thakur. And they're all, and Haridas Thakur is Lord Brahma. <coughs> and seeing the condition of Kali Yuga in this material world, seeing the flames of illusion and ego burning to ashes, all goodness, and destroying people's lives, they felt helpless. They were all in their own ways praying, Krishna, if you don't personally appear, there's nothing anyone can do. 